So we're going to continue talking about um, object-oriented object programming in Python, and in this video we're going to talk about inheritance. And inheritance is a lot like um, biological classifications where you talk about um, families and classes and phylums and um, genus and species and all that. Uh, so this is a very similar kind of concept. Uh, we're going to take a look at inheritance using a simple example here where we have a class for teacher. It's a very simple class. Um, just has two methods, one that prints out office hours and another that prints out meeting times. But we're um, asserting here that every teacher is also a class human. So we're asserting all teachers are humans. I don't know if all my students would agree with that or not, but um, I like to believe that's the case. So up here we have a class human, which has an init method that initializes the name and gender of the teacher, and it also has a string method, which just prints out the name and the gender. Okay, so notice that then I can come down here and instantiate uh, class teacher, and when I do that, I'm instantiating it with my name and the fact that I'm a male, and calling that cook, and I'm printing cook. Now, what's interesting about this is that, first of all, teachers don't have names. There's nothing in here, um, no attributes of type name, but teachers inherit a name and a gender from being a human. So because we have inherited the human class, then every teacher automatically gets a name and a gender. And not only that, we also inherit the methods. So we're going to inherit this init method and the string method. And so when we instantiate teacher, then this method will be called and we can we have available to us this string method. All right. So let's run this and see what happens when we then instantiate uh, our teacher. And it says Dr. Cook is a male when we print it out. So that print then is calling a string method for teacher and we have a string method up here that's called and just prints out the name and the gender. Okay, so what if then we wanted to have our own initialization for a teacher and maybe we wanted to add in some more things or maybe have our own string method? Okay. Well, that brings us to this idea of having a super class and an inherited class. We're going to take a look at a different example where we have a class of type computer. Um, this is going to maintain a list of computers. And for the computers, we're going to keep a list of a bunch of different attributes. Uh, the manufacturer, the processor, how much RAM it has, the drive capacity, screen size, the operating system. So these are all things that um, computers have. And then also when we do the init here for computers, we are actually going to add um, any com computer that we instantiate, we're going to add to the list of computers. Okay. Now we have a couple of different classes of computers. One is a cell phone. And with a cell phone, in addition to having um, all this other information like manufacturer, processor. So we see we have that information out here. We are also passing in other things specifically to a phone like the name, uh, the carrier, the plan that you're on, the color of the phone, the battery life of the phone, this kind of information. So these are not all attributes for the phone, but we have the, also the attributes of being a computer, which we want to pass back to um, the superclass computer. And the way we do that is we use um, the superclass with its init method, and we pass to it the information that we need to um, instantiate a computer. And then this also has a string method. Oh, let's see. If we go up here. Um, Well, okay, I guess this is in the next part. I was, I was thinking there's a string method for computers, but that's actually in the, the, the next file. Okay, uh, we also have a string method for phones. It just prints out the name of the phone, the carrier, and the operating system it runs on. Similar to phones, we have laptops, which have a name, a battery life, a touchscreen, and then this is all the um, computer information, which is passed on to the super.init. 
And let's see how this works. And this also has a string method. All right, so I'm going to instantiate a phone and a laptop. And I put a bunch of information in here, most of which I just made up. Um, we have a Droid Razor, which is on, on Verizon. And it's maroon and it's got some other stuff. And then we have a laptop, which is an HP ProBook. Um, it's not a touch screen. This is the processor speed and that kind of information. Again, I made those numbers up, so don't try to look for this laptop on the internet. You may not find it. Um, and then we can print these two things because both classes, phone and laptop, have a string method. And then when we're done printing those two out, we're going to get down here and go through the list of computers from the computer class, and then we're going to print computer out again. And I think we'll see something a little bit interesting when we do that. So let's go ahead and run this. And we actually get the same output. So up here, we print out the razor. And when we do that, remember that the razor has all of this information, but the string method is just going to print out um, the name, the carrier, and the OS. Now, wait a minute. The OS, where is it getting that from? There's no OS here. Well, remember that it inherits the OS from being a computer. So we can go ahead and reference that attribute as a phone, self.OS. And similarly with a laptop, we're putting up um, some similar information. Now, also notice that these don't look exactly the same thing, right? With our phone, we get the carrier. And for the laptop, we get something a little bit different. So the reason for that is these are actually two different classes, laptop and phone. And they all both have their own different um, string methods. And so the appropriate string method is called for each class. In the case of the razor, we call the phone string method. In the case of the pro book, we call the laptop string method. Notice that that happens down here in a loop too. We do this loop for computer in. So we go back up here to computers, um, the computer class. Remember that has a list of computers and every time we use this init method for a computer, um, we add that computer into this list. Which means that, actually when we do that, we do that first for the phone, and when it appends cell for the phone, we're actually adding to it um, an object of type or class phone, which means that when we call print that phone, we're going to use a string method for that phone. And similarly, the next thing that we added into the list was the HBook Pro, or sorry, HP Pro Book. That's something else. Um, and as of type laptop, again, it has its own string method. And when we appended this to the list, we were actually appending the class laptop or an object of type class laptop, even though we were using the init method for computer. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, this gets a little bit long. So if you don't want to have this huge list of different attributes in your init method, turns out there's a simple way to handle that using args. Arg stands for arguments. And this basically, the, the name args here actually isn't that important. It's the star that's important. But this is what um, is sort of the standard for using when you're going to pass in a list of arguments. And basically what we're saying is, yeah, we know we're taking a list of arguments. We don't care how long it is. We just know that it's a list. And whatever you pass in to me, I need the name, the battery life, and the touchscreen in that order. For the laptop and the rest of it, I am just going to pass on to the init method for the super class, which is computer. So whatever follows is going up here to computer. And we do the same thing with phone. And use, again, the list args. Pass it to the super.init. And those args will be passed in here as a list, which then will be used to initialize um, each one of these things as a computer. <clears throat> so other than that, other than substituting a big, huge, long list of arguments for this, 
and then passing this in instead of that big long list like we did over here. Um, the code here is pretty much identical. I think I did make one change, and that is to notice that the computer class actually does have a string method now, which just returns the RAM, but we are never going to see that because we are printing out um, down here, we're printing out a phone and a laptop, and the phone and laptop both have their own string methods. And so in that case, this string method will override the string method for the computer. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get the exact same output. So again, the args here is just a shortcut method for um, handling a list. Notice that if I comment out the string method and run this again, now in this case, what I'm getting is the RAM for both of those. They both have 512 megabytes. Um, Am I burping so much? Um, actually, I screwed up. They don't both have 512 megabytes. This is the phone both times. So for the phone, I get rid of um, the string method. And so now when we try to print out a phone, it's going to use the super class's computer string. We're not overriding that anymore. Okay, so one last piece of this video is when do we use inheritance and when do we use another method? And generally speaking, you shouldn't use inheritance unless you have to. Um, it creates a lot of overhead and um, can create a lot of problems. Now, there are times when you should use inheritance. And this is sort of coming up on an example where you could or should. When you have a bunch of different classes that all have some base characteristics that are the same. So, for example, when you have a lot of different computers, you can have a phone, you can have a laptop, you can have a desktop, um, you can have a handheld calculator, um, you could have a tablet. There's just a bunch of different ways that you could have a computer. And so all of those things have the same base information and may have some common methods too. And in that case, where you have a large number of classes that all have um, some common base characteristics. In that case, you would want to use an inheritance. But let's look at an example where maybe it's not such a great idea. So this is a, um, a completely new example where I'm going to take an uh, inventory of some tools. And we're going to have wrenches. And notice that this inventory is all um, done with dictionaries. So we're going to have some wrenches. And wrenches are hand tools and they're stored in a toolbox. We have some sockets, again, the hand tool stored in a toolbox. Uh, we have an impact wrench, which is pneumatic and stored in a toolbox. And we have a jack, which is um, pneumatic and stored on the floor. So in this case down here, I have inventory written two different ways. One using inheritance 
And one using the method we actually are already familiar with, we just haven't named it, is composition. Um, and these two things are going to do the exact same thing. The outputs here should be exactly the same. But the way that we implement these is going to be different. Okay, so um, again, these are both uh, dictionaries. So dictionary is a built-in type, and all types in Python are objects. So we can inherit from the dictionary type. And all we're going to do in this case is add on um, a method to the dictionary class. And this method is just going to give us a list of the tools that are of type pneumatic. So we're going to go through all the tools in the dictionary. Self in this case is now a dictionary because we are inheriting the dictionary class. Um, and we're not um, initializing any other class attributes in here. So self is a dictionary. We're going to go through all the tools in self. And we're going to check if the first thing it says pneumatic or not. And then if it does, we're going to append that to our pneumatic tools list. So this is inheritance inheritance where we're inheriting from the built-in class dictionary versus composition which is the way we've been doing object-oriented programming where we're going to pass in again a dictionary of tools but in this case we're just going to store that as an attribute for our class notice we're not in inheriting any other classes now there might be some hardcore python programmers out there that would disagree with that in the sense that every class is built up from the base class object, but we're not going into that. So ignoring the fact that I just said all of that. So in this case, we're setting up an attribute, tools. This tools is going to be a dictionary. And then for that dictionary, we're going to build up the exact same method, except for notice that here, um, instead of using self, I have to use the attribute self.tools, which is the dictionary. Okay, so there's some minor differences there. And then down here, there's some minor differences. Um, I can print out the inventory when I do the inheritance. Inventory in this case is instantiated as a class tools, um, class tools inheritance. And so that actually is a dictionary. So this is actually gets passed into the dictionary um, init. And then, we, so we can print that out as a dictionary. And then we can use the method for inventory one, which is pneumatic tools. Uh, this looks very similar, except for that when we print this out, inventory two, if we just print out inventory two, it's just gonna tell us it's a class type tools composition. So to actually see the dictionary, we have to access the attribute, attribute tools. So this looks a little bit different down here in the composition versus the inheritance. Um, but other than that, they're, pretty, they're structurally pretty similar. And for most programmers, it's favored to use this version versus the inheritance unless there's good reason to do otherwise. So let's just run this. Um, and again, we get printouts that they're exactly the same thing. Um, so this is the list of all the tools. We're printing that out as a dictionary. I said list, but I meant dictionary. And then this is the one pneumatic tool. Um, sorry, there's two pneumatic tools, right? The jack and the impact wrench. So we get that list and then the same thing down here when we do it via composition. All right, so again, the difference between composition versus inheritance. In inheritance, you inherit um, a class type, or inherit from a class type, I should say, not. And then with composition, you're actually taking um, a class type, in this case, a dictionary, and assigning it as one of the attributes for the class that you're creating.